It's safe to assume that at this point most tech-savvy Windows 10 users have made the switch from SATA hard drives to SSDs, whether by getting a relatively new PC or by doing the upgrade themselves. Windows 10 has plenty of features that help SSDs operate to their full potential, but it doesn't always enable them by default. In addition, many of the must-do rules from the early days of SSDs aren't necessarily valid anymore, and we're going to dispel a couple of those here. Here's our latest list of do's and don'ts for your SSD. Disable fast startup. Yes, this one may sound counterintuitive given that fast startup was pretty much designed to make the boot process faster for people with SSDs. But at this point in time, the time gained from the fast startup is negligible. If you have an SSD and disabling fast startup means your PC gets a nice clean full reboot each time you shut down. There are various niche issues fast startup can cause too. For example, if you dual boot, you may not be able to access your Windows drive as it's locked. Disabling fast startup isn't essential, but it could be useful. To disable fast startup, go to Settings, System, Power and Sleep, Additional Power Settings. Choose what the power buttons do, and if the options at the bottom are greyed out in the next window, click Change Settings that are currently unavailable, and uncheck the Turn on Fast Startup box. Make sure your hardware is ready for it. One of the easiest mistakes to make when getting a new SSD is assuming it will come with a cable and that everything will just slot perfectly in with your existing PC setup. With laptops with expandable 2.5 inch storage bays that's kind of the case. You just slot it into the spare bay and you're good to go. On a desktop PC however if you're getting a SATA SSD drive then you'll need to make sure your power supply has enough spare slots or cables to accommodate the SATA cable connector. If not, you can always get a Y splitter that allows two SSDs connect to one Molex power slot in your PSU. SSDs don't use a lot of energy, so it shouldn't be an issue. Of course, you need to have free SATA slots on your motherboard as well, but this shouldn't be an issue unless you have many hard drives already. Then there are the newer M2 SSDs, which connect to M2 connectors on your motherboard. As a general rule, only more recent generations of motherboards actually have this connector. So if you have an older PC, then you're out of luck. Or look up your motherboard online to make sure it has the M2 connector. What's more, you need to know whether your M2 connector is PCIe, NVMe, or SATA, and make sure the M2 SSD you have is in the correct format. Update the SSD firmware. To make sure your SSD is running as well as it can, it's worth staying on top of firmware updates for it. Each SSD manufacturer has its own method for SSD firmware upgrades, so you'll need to go to the official website of your SSD manufacturer and follow their guide from there. A handy tool to assist you, however, is Crystal Disk Info, which displays in-depth information about your disk, including the firmware version. Enable AHCI. The Advanced Host Controller Interface, or AHCI, is a paramount feature for ensuring that Windows will support all of the features that come with running an SSD on your computer, especially the Trim feature, which allows Windows to help the SSD perform its routine garbage collection. To enable AHCI, you'll have to enter the BIOS of your computer and enable it somewhere within its settings. I can't tell you exactly where the setting is, as each BIOS functions differently. You have to do a little bit of hunting. Chances are that newer computers will have this enabled by default. It's most recommended that you enable this feature before installing the operating system, although you may be able to get away with enabling it after Windows has already been installed. Enable Trim. Trim is vital to extending the lifespan of your SSD, namely by keeping it clean under the hood. Windows 10 should enable this by default, but it's worth double checking to see if it's been enabled. To make sure trim is enabled, open your command prompt and enter the following. fsutil behavior set disable delete notify zero. Now, what you want to see, counterintuitively, is a notation saying disabled, which means that trim is enabled. Go figure. Check that system restore is enabled. In the early days of SSDs, when they were much less durable and more breakdown prone than they are today, many people recommended turning off System Restore to improve the drive's performance and longevity. These days, that advice is pretty much redundant. System Restore is an extremely useful feature that we recommend keeping an eye on, so it's worth going to your System Restore settings to confirm that your SSD hasn't disabled it on the quiet. Click Start, type Restore, and then click Create a Restore Point. 
Next, right click on your SSD drive in the list, configure in the new window and then click turn on system protection. Keep Windows defrag on. Another relic of the early days of SSDs, defragmenting an SSD was not only unnecessary, but potentially damaging to the SSD as defragging chipped away at the number of read-write cycles left in the drive. That's kind of true still, but Windows 10 knows this now, and if you have scheduled defragmentation enabled, Windows will identify your SSD and indeed it will defrag it, because contrary to popular belief, SSDs do get fragmented, albeit much less so than a regular drive. With that said, it's better to think of today's defrag option in Windows 10 as more of an all-round disk health tool, even though Windows now refers to the process as optimization rather than defragmentation. The process will also retrim your SSDs, which runs the lovely trim function we talked about earlier. In other words, Windows defrag adapts to your SSD, so you may as well keep it on. Configure write caching. On many SSDs, user-level write caching can have a detrimental effect on the drive. To figure this out, you'll have to disable the option in Windows and see how the drive performs afterwards. If your drive performs worse, enable it again. To reach the configuration window, right-click Computer on the Start menu and click Properties. Click Device Manager, expand Disk Drives, right-click on your SSD and click Properties. Select the Policies tab and in this tab you'll see an option label Enable Write Caching on the Device. Benchmark your SSD with and without the option and compare the results and you'll see what we mean. Set the high performance power option. This should be pretty much a no-brainer. When your SSD powers on and off all the time, you'll notice a slight lag whenever you use your computer after you've been idle for a while. To switch your power options, access your control panel, click System and Security and then click Power Options and select High Performance from the list. You may need to click Show Additional Plans to find it. On a laptop, of course, you can click the battery icon on your notification area and select high performance from there. OK, for more Windows tips, see our guide on how to get a list of all software installed on your system and a rundown of all the ways you can open the Task Manager in Windows 10. Links to all of that in the description. OK, as always, thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.